An intrusion of magma was recently determined to be likely ongoing at one of Alaska's most potentially dangerous volcanoes. Visible from Anchorage, this activity is ongoing at the towering Mount Spur volcano, which is the closest active volcano to the city. For several months now, this increased activity went largely unnoticed due to an outage of instrumentation monitoring this 11,069 foot or 3,374 meter tall strata volcano. However, once the seismic outage was fixed, a notable increase in the rate of volcano tectonic earthquakes was observed from what is the norm, reaching as high as 33 a day when normally less than one quake would occur a day. While the less than 10 kilometers depth earthquakes likely represented hydrothermal earthquakes, what is of particular interest to scientists are Spurs 20 to 37 kilometer depth earthquakes. These deeper events mark what are known as low frequency earthquakes and likely indicate the movement of magma at those depths. Per a direct quote from the U.S. Geological Survey, low-frequency LF earthquakes are caused by cracks resonating as magma and gases move towards the surface. They are often seen prior to volcanic eruptions, but their occurrence is also part of the normal background seismicity at some volcanoes, and their occurrence does not necessarily indicate that an eruption is imminent. Supporting the assertion that a deep magmatic intrusion is ongoing is the fact that a section of the volcano is rising due to the displacement caused by deep intruding material being uplifted by a total of 1.09 inches or 2.77 centimeters since this process began after November 30th of last year. So, does this mean that it is now only a matter of time before the highly explosive Mount Spur erupts, potentially once again dumping ash on Anchorage? How severe is its current on rest? Before I can answer these questions, you need to first understand the plumbing of Mount Spur so you can see why various earthquakes are occurring. Mount Spur is the tallest volcano in the Aleutian Arc and as a subduction related volcano is located on a patch of crust which averages approximately 23 miles or 37 kilometers thick. Spurs Mang Magma Chamber is located at between 35 and 20 kilometers depth, meaning it occurs at unusually deep depths in the lower crust. Thus, any quakes there likely indicate intruding magma. Mount Spur also contains a conduit which leads to a far smaller magma chamber at 10 kilometers or 6 miles depth, which acts as a portable zone for magma to pool in before an eruption occurs. While no fresh magma is currently located in this zone, there does appear to be increased heat originating from deep in this volcanic system. This heat is heating adjacent groundwater at shallower depths, probably around 6 kilometers depth, which then slowly rises to the surface, lubricating faults along the way which then slip, generating the shallow earthquakes being observed. Despite the current unrest at Mount Spur being its strongest in 19 years, it is actually quite a weak form of unrest. Minimal magma seems to be involved at fairly deep depths, and since this intrusion has been ongoing for six months, only indicates a very slow upward trend. This slow progress is likely due to only minimal volatiles and gas being present in the magma, suggesting a low likelihood of it ever reaching the surface and erupting. Also, when you compare the current activity to two other episodes of uplift and unrest which occurred during 1996 to 1998 and 2004 to 2005, it fits between the two in terms of intensity. Thus, much like Alaska's Mount Edgecombe volcano near the town of Sitka, a magmatic intrusion is ongoing which is causing uplift, but current signs are not pointing towards any realistic chance of an eruption occurring anytime soon. Thus, on my 0 to 10 opinion based on rest scale, I would rate Mount Spur's current activity as just barely fitting as a 3. In the highly unlikely event that Mount Spur behaves against all expectations and does end up erupting, there are no structures located within a 25 mile radius of its most recently active vent known as Crater Peak.